In this video, I will cover how we can use direct design or direct synthesis method in order to build, design a uh, PID, an ideal PID controller if we're given some kind of process transfer function. So as I recall earlier, we were able to determine what the process transfer function is by perturbing our system with uh, unit step input, for example, and examining the output response as a function of time. And so once we know what our process is, now we can go about designing what a controller should be uh, for a system that would get us good feedback uh, and good performance and robustness, which is the objective of any uh, process control engineer. And so the first place we're going to turn to is our closed loop transfer function, which I drew here to the right. Um, it's like every other closed loop transfer function we've dealt with. We're going to set some kind of desired um, output relative to an input and uh, the transfer function, closed loop transfer function will have the form GCGP over one plus GCGP. And I'm gonna let this term be equal to alpha, which is our desired response. And if we solve for GC as a function of alpha, we get this and alpha will let equal to one over lambda S plus one, where this one means we have offset free tracking, which means um, when our system reaches the new steady state value, there won't be a gap or a difference between that new value and our set point, which is what we want. And then our also um, we want first order dynamics because we have uh, no oscillations. And so to move forward with this example, it's really just a matter of plugging and chugging. So we know that um, G is equal to GP if you have no uh, plant model mismatch. And uh, therefore we can evaluate G, C, um, pretty easily. What I'm going to do first though is evaluate these individual individual terms in the denominator. 1 minus alpha is equivalent to 1 minus 1 over lambda s plus 1, which is equal to lambda s over lambda s plus 1. So there's a plus 1 minus 1 here. Um, and when we uh, evaluate with what alpha over 1 minus alpha is, uh, we get the following. So alpha over one minus alpha is equal to, um, so the inverse of this, which would be lambda s plus one over lambda s, and then uh, times alpha, which was one over lambda s plus one. So these terms cancel out. We're left with one over lambda s um, for this term that we circled. And so now when we write out what our controller should be, we will find that it is equal to the inverse of G, which would be 10 S plus one times five S plus one quantity divided by K and then times one over Lambda S. And um, we're nearly there in terms of um, a standardized PID controller. Um, the thing to note here is that uh, PID controllers uh, have the form tau i tau d s squared plus tau i s plus one divided by tau i s. And this whole term is multiplied by the controller gain kc. So we've got the three tuning parameters kc, tau i, and tau d. And so we need to get it into this form um, to report it to uh, another engineer or whatever on uh, a write-up. And so to do that, we will um, expand our denominator here, or I'm sorry, our numerator in this term. So what we'll find is that GC is equal to, we'll have 50 S squared plus 15 S plus one divided by K times Lambda S. And um, what we need to do next is be given values for Lambda and K. Um, and these will be assigned to you. We'll pick a lambda based on what kind of performance or robustness we want. 
Um, and then K is also a term that uh, is, describes our process gain. And it's a matter of how confident we are in our model accuracy, our plant, our process model accuracy. Um, in this example, to move forward, I'm going to say we're going to let k equal 1, and I'm going to let lambda equal 5, so we can uh, evaluate what our three tuning parameters should be in this example. And so in that case, what we'll find is that we'll get gc is equal to 50s squared plus 15s plus 1 divided by 1 times 5 times s. And um, this is not the form we necessarily want it in because we need to get some kind of kc and tau i value out front. And to do that, um, what we're going to do is we're going to multiply by 3 over 3 um, to get 15s in the denominator of gc. And so when we do that, we'll have 3 times 50s squared plus 15s plus 1 over 15s. And the cool thing now is that we can recognize that uh, kc should be 3. We also see that tau i should be 15. And if we look at this part here, we'll see that 50 is equal to tau i tau d. We know that tau i was equal to 15. Therefore, tau d must be equal to 50 over 15. And so we've just evaluated all three of our uh, PID tuning parameters based on um, this one lambda value. This K value is from our process model. So um, allegedly uh, or hopefully it is, uh, we're accurate in our, uh, our model creation. And um, this lambda is based off how much performance or robustness we want to go with. But this wraps up how we can um, perform a direct design or direct synthesis uh, to build a PID controller um, based off some kind of second order process transfer function. So I hope you guys find it useful. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for watching.